time you try to learn Kubernetes security, you come across terms like RBAC, IRSA, cluster role, cluster role binding, and they all seem confusing. In this lecture, we are gonna go through all of this and understand how you can secure your application running on Kubernetes on EKS. Let's start by working backwards. At the end of the day, your precious application is running in a pod. And your application or the pod needs access to AWS resources. Maybe, for example, your application wants to create application load balancer or maybe want to attach security group to worker nodes. So how will you do that? So forget Kubernetes for a second. Let's say your application is running in an instance, like a good old Amazon EC2 instance. How would you give access to this instance to create application load balancer or to create an attached security group to other EC2s? So you will attach an IAM role and this IAM role will have policies allowing these actions such as creating application load balancer or attaching security group and other things such as access other AWS services. Similarly, now if we go back to pod, theoretically, if we can attach IAM role with appropriate policies to the pod, this pod will have the necessary access. But pod life is not so simple, right? Uh, because there will be pods for one application in namespace one, another application in namespace two, uh, pods go down, pods come up, uh, replica set, HPA, all that stuff, right? So to attach a IAM role to the pod, uh, you need to go to the place where pod life starts. So it needs to be implemented in the deployment manifest. But deployment manifest is a Kubernetes construct. And you cannot just put cloud specific concepts such as IAM role in a Kubernetes construct, right? Uh, because we need to abstract cloud specific constructs in Kubernetes construct. So that's what enables Kubernetes to run in multiple platform. So you need a layer in between. Say hello to service account. So at first you have policies which allows access to certain resources and then you attach those policies to an IAM role and then you associate this IAM role to this Kubernetes concept called service accounts. And this service account can be associated to a deployment manifest. So this is quite powerful, right? So now, depending on your application, you can associate different IAM role doing different things. However, all this deployment manifest service account uh, is running within Amazon EKS. So this service account and IAM role needs to have a way to communicate with AWS IAM service, right? To validate uh, that what policies you have, uh, whether you have proper uh, temporary credentials or not. So to do that, we have IAM OIDC provider. This is cluster level. You set it up one time and then you are good to go. So now you are probably thinking, Raj, you showed us this deployment manifest, but I don't see a service account here. So like other Kubernetes concept, when service account is not specified, default service account is used. And you can see that if you run command kubectl get sa or kubectl get service accounts, you can see this will return default. But if we run this command, such as kubectl get sa dash capital A, you have to have this A in capital, else it's not gonna work. Then it's gonna show you all the service accounts in your Kubernetes cluster. For this example, let's look deeper in this ALB ingress controller defined in 2048-game namespace. I'm using this because we use the same example in ingress in couple and couple other lectures, so it's a little easier to understand and correlate to. This ALB ingress controller watches for ingress resource and talks to Kubernetes API server. And when an ingress resource is deployed, this ALB ingress controller, which is running in a pod, 
creates application load balancer, security groups, attaches security group, all that good stuff. So if we take a look at this ALB ingress controller service account, so you do that by running kubectl describe sa, give the name of the service account and then give the namespace. You can see there is a IAM role associated with this service account. So this is literally the role name. And then if you go to AWS IAM console and look up this role, you will see all the policies attached to the role, like EC2 security group. And if I scroll down, there will be role to create load balancer and so forth. So how do you associate this service account to a specific deployment? You can specify service account name in your deployment manifest file. Uh, so if we take a look at our familiar uh, ALB ingress controller deployment file, uh, kind deployment, and then the container name is ALB ingress controller, and it's associated with the service account name of ALB ingress controller. So you guys and girls are probably thinking, okay, got this. Now, how do you create service account? So hold on to that thought for a couple minutes. We're going to get to it. But first, let's try to understand the service account a little bit more. So the service account tied to IAM role. The IAM role has nothing to do with the actual Kubernetes cluster, right? And your pods running in your application needs Kubernetes cluster access as well. So that's where cluster role comes into play. Like IAM role gives access to specific AWS resources, cluster roles grant access to cluster specific resources. So this is Kubernetes specific resources, such as uh, it enables you to do create, delete, list on the nodes, pods, namespaces, and all other Kubernetes cluster specific resources. And to run your application effectively in a pod, not only you need access to AWS resources, you also need access to other Kubernetes cluster resources. So if I run this command, kubectl get cluster role, you can see all the cluster role that's defined. Let's take a look at the cluster role admin, which comes with the cluster. So if I run kubectl describe cluster role admin, you can see it has access to almost all Kubernetes resources. So you can see it, uh, it can do pods attach, pods exec, pods, uh, port forward, etc. namespaces, access to resource quotas. So it is a God level cluster role. And that's what you expect from an admin cluster role. But for your application, you should not use this admin cluster role. So let's take a look at this ALB ingress controller that we created for our application. So if we do kubectl describe cluster role ALB ingress controller, you can see what cluster resources it has access to and what level. For example, for pods, it has access to get, list, and watch, but this cluster role doesn't have access to create new pods. However, for ingresses or endpoints, it can create, get, list, update, watch, and patch. So now you guys and girls are probably thinking, this is good, but how do you create cluster role? Okay, so remember, we also wanted you guys and girls to hold off on the question on how to create service account. And now we are asking how to create cluster role. Okay, let's bring them all together. This is a sample manifest file. Let's start with the bottom part, which is creating the service account. So you can tell by the kind service account that is creating a service account. The name of the service account is ALB ingress controller, and it's creating the service account in the namespace 2048-game. Now on the top part, we are creating the cluster role. So you can tell by the kind cluster role that it's a cluster role, and the name of the cluster role is ALB ingress controller, and under rules, it has the resources and what kind of actions this cluster role can take on those resources. And cluster role is not a namespace specific construct, so there is no namespace in this. Okay, so at this point, we have the cluster role and we have a service account. 
So how will you associate this cluster role with this service account? Here comes cluster role binding. So you can see the kind is cluster role binding and the role ref you can see it's referencing the cluster role with the name LB ingress controller and also on the subject it's tying the service account LB ingress controller in the namespace 2048 dash game. So as you guys and girls probably figured this out that cluster role is reusable. If you have another namespace with the name engine X web server or something and you create a service account in that namespace, you can associate the same cluster role to that service account as well. All right, now that we understand cluster role and cluster role binding, let's try to understand the difference between role and cluster role. So this term role is pretty confusing because it is very generic. But note that this role has nothing to do with IAM role. This role is a Kubernetes role. So the simplest way to understand this is both role and cluster role represent set of permissions. So whatever you learned about cluster role, all the different permissions is true for role as well. Only thing that's different is role sets permission within a particular namespace. That's it. Don't think that, oh, role ties to namespace. So role works only on namespace specific resources such as pod or replica set and cluster role can only work on non namespace resources such as nodes. Not true. So you could use cluster role to define permissions about pods, replica sets, deployment, etc. like we saw. All it means is if you do not want to tie those permissions to a specific namespace, then you do not have to put namespace when you define the role and then it becomes cluster role. And if you put a namespace when you define the role, then it becomes a regular role. Why did they give this name role? I have no idea. I wish they give this name role as like namespace role or something because it's more appropriate and easier to understand. So I wanted to show you some example of role with a little bit of a different use case. So we already saw cluster role and we are using cluster role to secure a specific application. So there are two different security aspects in Kubernetes. One is uh, security of your application and that's what we explored using cluster role, service account, cluster role binding. And the next is security for the human users as in a granular permission of different users. So let's say for your DevOps person, you want to give granular permission in namespace. Uh, so maybe you want to give create, get, list, update, delete, watch, patch, permission on deployment, replica sets, and pods. So how will you do it? Since we are talking about specific namespace, you will create Kubernetes role defining access to resources in namespace, and then you will map Kubernetes username to role using role binding, and then you will map AWS IAM username to Kubernetes username and group using config map slash AWS auth. But if we look at the role binding, so on the left, we have the kind role. So note that instead of cluster role, the kind is just role because we have this namespace defined in this file. So note that cluster role did not have a namespace parameter and that does not mean that it is working on default namespace. When it is cluster role, that means it's working throughout the cluster. And then the rules are very, very similar to cluster role. You define API groups, resources, and verbs. And then you have the role binding, binding this deployment role with the user, the Kubernetes username developer Bob. And then in config map, you map that with the AWS IAM username, then Kubernetes username, and group will be name of the role, which is deployment role, and the kind is config map. So if this was for your application, 
you could use this with your service account as well, similar to cluster role binding, but you can put a namespace for your role manifest and that permission will only be specific to that specific namespace. So controlling access using roles, cluster role, role binding, cluster role binding is termed as role-based access control or RBAC. So what does all this bias? So let's say you have application one running in namespace one, and there are a few parts for this application one, and then you have namespace two, and it's running application two uh, with, with few parts as well. So in this namespace one, you can create a service account one and you can tie IAM role one and you can tie that to a cluster role one or namespace specific role one. Similarly for namespace two, you can have different cluster role, cluster role two or namespace two specific role, role two, service account two and IAM role two. And each of these IAM role and cluster role could have different permissions. So each application can have different access. And these two namespaces can be running in the same node or same EC2. So this gets you out of putting all the access in the node IAM role. If you put an IAM role associated with the node, which has all the access, all the pods running in the node inherit that role unless you use this approach. With this approach, node IAM role does not have to have all the accesses. This gives you more secure and granular design. And this is also known as IRSA or IAM roles for service accounts. And this concept replaces cube to IAM. And this is available from Kubernetes version 1.14 and above. If you are liking this video, please check out my new EKS course in Udemy. It's brand new, literally came out today. The course goes over Kubernetes basics. It teaches you all the Kubernetes concepts you need to know to get started with EKS. No separate course needed. Then it goes over EKS basics, then logging and monitoring, then EKS advanced concepts, uh, then securing EKS, Fargate, deploying EKS with DevOps, and then real world EKS projects. This whole course is built based on my real world experience. So I go deep on areas that you will use in your actual real world projects. I'll give the discounted link below in the description. Okay, so hopefully this video help you understand all these concepts and now you can secure your application in EKS. If you have any questions, comments you want to discuss uh, on this topic, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. I generally answer to all my comments. And if you like this video, if you think this was helpful, uh, click that like button, smash it if that's something you are into, and subscribe. Uh, I have a bunch of other technical videos, deep dive discussions on AWS services, and also I have videos on how I switched my career from mainframe to the cloud. All right, guys and girls, that's the video. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.